he asked me, would I pray for him? And I said, of course, I will pray for you. And I began to pray for him. And uh, all of a sudden, this man manifested uh, larger than I'd ever seen before. And he had a legion of demons. And the book of Mark came alive. And he, he actually said, I am legion. And I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Bible school. <laughs> you know. And he actually said that. He was manifesting and he was screaming. You could hear thousands of voices. And, and it was strong. And he just, I mean, I just barely touched him and started praying. And I remember both of my children were there. And they were small. you remember this? And he started and he just was like coming at me. And he came to charge me just about. He ran at me. And as he did, he went. <laughs> and he fell out on the ground, and he got back up, and he come again, charging at me. He's hitting this invisible wall that none of the rest of us can see. And he's, he's throwing himself down, and he's gnashing his teeth, and he's throwing himself on the cement and on cars. And we're just praying. I've got the team around. We're praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. I don't want the man to die. I mean, this demon is tearing him to pieces. And I'm just, in, I'm in shock, literally, I am. And I've done deliverance a lot, and I learned it all on the job. Nobody told me. I learned it all on the job. They come out and I pray. It just kind of happened. I didn't, nobody taught me it. You know, it was anointing. The Lord gave me, thank God he never left me. I'd have been dead. I'd have been dead many times. So, you know, I remember he said, I am legion. And I said, I don't care who you are. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, and I command you to loose this man, to be loose. And I remember my kids are standing there. The whole team is standing there, their mouths open. You know, now, we had done a lot of deliverance in the church, so this wasn't new to them. But this was. You know, this particular. And I'll never forget that. And I'll tell you, that wall was, I don't know whether it was a big angel. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it was. But God was faithful. Yeah, yeah. And we prayed through until that man settled down and, and uh, you know, uh, he come to me later that night and he said, ma'am, he said, ma'am, if I'd have known, he said, I thought you were a Presbyterian minister. He said, I didn't know you were a Pentecostal preacher. <laughs> he said, I'd have never asked you to pray for me. I, I said, well, praise God. He said, but I'm so glad that I did. He said, I've got peace. He said, I've been sleeping under the bridge for months and months and months. He said, I can't come out. I'm too scared. And it was actually, it was amazing. I didn't go out to find him. I did not go out. To, I don't go out to find him. But the Lord led us there. But he was there. Do you see what I'm saying? He was there. I, I'm not suggesting that you all do that. I, matter of fact, I'm suggesting that you probably don't do that. But it was meant to be. That's right, Roger. It was meant to be. But God was there. And God was faithful. He was, he was so faithful. And this man... Uh, his life was changed, you know, changed right there. Uh, we had another uh, homeless man that, that um, God, God just did miracles. And he wrote a poem. He wrote a poem about our ministry, how we saved his life. Uh, I had a call about a month ago, and you never know. You, you don't know how you impacted people. Okay? You just don't know. And uh, I had a call about a month ago, and... Uh, Remember I told you about the sidewalk Sunday school? Well, I didn't do that ministry. I put it together. It was my vision, and I administered it, and I got all the money for it, and the truck, and uh, the gifts, and all that. But I had two ministers, Michael and Jennifer Fleet, that were the children's ministers. They did puppets. They did everything. I mean, they, they were great. They, they just were great. We did drama. They did everything imaginable. Well, Jennifer... Um, Went home to be with the Lord about a month ago. And so I wrote a eulogy. I uh, couldn't be there. Uh, but I wrote a eulogy. And uh, I spoke to her husband uh, a few days after that. And uh, I spoke to uh, another minister who was in my church and another minister who was in my church. And they're still doing outreach evangelism. They're still in the same park in Benita. And I said, this touches my heart. And Michael said to me, he said, uh, you know, you'll never know that what you taught, he said, it's true. He said, we still do it. He said, for five years, we went down to River Park, which is the, the uh, lower end area uh, where there are poor 
poor people, poor black people. He said, for five years we went down there and ministered to those children. He said, we're still doing outreach all over Collier County. And I said, oh, what a blessing. Oh, what a blessing that that is. Uh, we just never know, you know, what God's going to do. Uh, but it's exciting to see that. So let's talk about a little bit about um, getting started. All right. Uh, let's talk a, mo a moment about vision. And I think that's kind of where we are in the church. You know, we got to get the vision. And... Um, I know a pastor said to me that, that he wants to start teaching more on evangelism when he returns. Um, I know that, that I already know prophetically that um, the word has come um, that uh, God is, reach, is releasing a spirit of power evangelism. And um, I believe that. I believe he's releasing it all over the earth. And he's releasing it in, a, in us if we'll receive it. So um, we've got to get a vision. And, you know, um, how many of you were here when the pastor taught on the gifts? Are you, are you pretty well acquainted with how you're gifted? Do you, do you understand your giftings and callings? Um, we've got to get a vision for who we are and, and, and the body of Christ. We've got to get a vision that we're somebody, number one. Amen. We've got to get a vision that we belong to the king and that Jesus lives within us. So even if we don't have our own self-confidence, we got to have Jesus's. Because he lives within us. Okay? Yes. He lives within us. So we've got to put our confidence in him and allow ourselves to be vessels. Okay? Sacrifices. Acceptable to him to do his good service. So we've got to get that vision. We, we've got to begin to, to pray and seek God for a plan. I'm not talking about master plan. I'm talking about starting at the basics. Let's start at the basics. Let's start at the beginning. We all have those abilities, those little things that we can do. And it's exciting. There's nothing more exciting than begin to evangelize, begin to touch people, begin to bring them in, see new souls coming. You know, we want fresh souls. Amen. We want fresh Amen. souls to disciple. You know, I'm not saved here for myself. You're not saved here for yourself. We are saved for our brothers and sisters in Christ who have not come into the kingdom. And that's the way we need to think. So let, getting started, we've got to talk about vision. Scripture tells us that without a vision, the people perish. In other words, we need direction and not just any direction, but the direction of the Lord. Okay? So that's why it's important to get pastor's vision. Because if we all have our own vision... We're going a thousand different directions. We're not moving together. Be like being in a canoe or one of those long boats. All of us have paddles and we all decide to go four different directions. What's going to happen to our boat? It's going to flip us over. So we've got to get the vision of our pastor. And he has a vision. And he's a strong evangelist. Very strong evangelist. So we've got to get that vision and join our gifts with his. Because we all have them. Yeah. We all have we gotta join our gifts with his. It's not that we're not gifted, we are. We gotta join our gifts together, okay? That will make us strong. A lot of Christians feel like you need to have a special call to witness to the lost. But I feel like just about any Christian Amen. can witness to the lost because it's Amen. the Holy Spirit who draws all men unto God. Yes. John Amen. 6, 44. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. And the more that you cooperate with him in that drawing, the stronger it gets. It will even get to the point, I have been, um, when I was doing a lot of street ministry, I could walk into a 7-Eleven, and the Lord would point out somebody and tell me everything about their life. Mm -hmm. And what he wanted me to do. I have followed women out and didn't have a gallon of milk for her three children. And I provided her with that gallon of milk. Mm -hmm. And she just cried. Cried. Yeah. Do you think that she's ready now to accept Jesus? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I walked up to women who are prostitutes and read their book, read their mail. Not in judgment. But I read the inside of oceans because Jesus would tell me. What do you think happened? They wept. They wept openly because I would tell them, I don't know this. Jesus told me about it. But he told me to tell you that he loves you. That's right. Amen. It's our availability that the Lord is looking for, not 
our talent. We can have talent and use it for the Lord, don't get me wrong. But it's our availability, just being available. If you have a heart for evangelism and make yourself available to his service, the anointing will come. It, it will follow. It will come behind you. I, I'm a perfect example. I'm a backslidden preacher. Okay? I'm a prodigal who thought I had lost everything that God had ever given me. But the instant that I gave it back to him, that I repented of my sin, he took care of me. He began to bring me back on that road. The instant, now the instant that he did that, I wasn't preaching. Don't get me wrong. Because the wages of sin, there is a wage for sin. And you will pay it. Okay? Once it's under the blood, then it won't be death. But there is consequences. Okay? There is consequences. And you walk through it. But he's faithful. He's faithful. Okay? Calvary does answer for me. He is faithful. And he'll bring us to that place and he'll bring us back. My first outreach experience, I began to go out weekly with some friends to witness to the lost. After a time of prayer and seeking the Lord, we would head out into the streets. We never came back empty-handed without a soul being one. Never. 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 And we didn't knock on doors. Never. They would just come out. You can ask Jenna. We'd go out in that street and they'd come out like bugs. Just, just start coming out from all over the place. Or have I ever been in danger? And believe me, I've witnessed in some places that were very dangerous. I credit that to this one thing and one thing only. We spent time in prayer. We prayed where we were going. We prayed over it. We started owning it. We prayed over it until we changed the climate. We began to tell the enemy, this ain't yours. I'm coming. I'm Joshua. I'm coming. I'm going to conquer. I'm going to take this as not yours. We spent time in prayer, and we were led only by the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you something else. This is very important. Very, very important. I have never, ever, ever, Ask someone to come to Christ and they reject it. Never. Never. I've never had anyone reject me or salvation. Why? Because I've never witnessed to someone that the Holy Spirit did not draw them to himself and to me. Amen. Never. I never witnessed for the sake of witnessing. I witnessed those men, women, and children that were drawn unto him. Okay? He draws them. I don't draw them. I pray over them. He draws them. I lead them. They accept him. That's how it works. So I spent time in prayer and was led by the Holy Spirit. And that's how people come to Christ. We must get the Father's heart to be successful. The Father's heart, imagine this, just think about this, Miss Patty. How many children do you have? Two. Imagine if you have as many children as God the Father has to hold them. The Bible says that no one loves like he does. That I can't even begin to love my own child like he does. We have to get the mindset of the parent of the prodigal. Do you remember the story? When he looked out, when he looked 